I've had a few people ask me about the properties in the Philippines. So I'm just going to go over my experience with my property rentals, with the costs. Uh, first thing is we spent 1.2 million on the actual physical building, another 600,000 on the renovations. So it owes me 1.8 million. But what you've got to think of is what do you need for each room or each apartment? So you've got your kitchenette, 14,000, fridge, 13,000, electric hob, 1,500, electric oven, 1,500, electric kettle, 800. And you'll see there's a long list of items that you'll actually put into an apartment. And these figures are reasonably priced. Um, air, a decent air conditioning unit is going to be about 13,000 for a one bedroom apartment. Um, but you can see there's a total coming up soon. It's going to cost, or does cost me, 71900 per unit. So you take the 71900 and you times it by three because we've got three downstairs units. And what we have here, so now we split the unit into four pieces. You've got the upstairs, which is the width of the three lower ones, so it's half the building size. So that's 600,000 renovation cost, 300,000. Each lower unit is 200,000 construction uh, purchase price. Renovations, 100,000. Furnishings, 71,900. Total load per unit is 371,900 per unit. Income after expenses per unit, we based on 6,000 rent, that's after all expenses. So it works out that it would take five years, two months to repay the debt if it was permanently rented out and no maintenance was being carried out. Reality is, we all know that ain't gonna happen. You're gonna have rent-free periods, you're gonna have maintenance costs, you're gonna have some bits and pieces to add on to that. So what I based it on is a six-year repayment period now I'll get on to why I say something like me, it's okay to do rentals and maybe not for you. The first thing is, I've already invested this money. This is already um, constructing the rest of bits and pieces from the revenue generated. In the UK, I, I'm over the tax threshold when I'm working there. So there is no benefit for having that money in the UK. I just end up paying tax on it. Um, in the Philippines, I can just keep rolling the money that comes in. Now, the average retiree would invest in a larger house and if they got sick or something they've normally invested their large budget in that 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 big house that they bought is not cash generating this was actually a rundown building that we purchased for 1.2 million we converted one of the rooms into the call center but it's very easy to convert into another room um, well, I call them rooms but they're actually apartments it's because people call them door one door two door three um, but I could convert it if I wanted to uh, do I need to? Well, the answer is no. We don't actually need to convert the call centre. It will sit there for now because I've got other stuff to do. We've got another apartment on the other side, um, which I need to move my stuff out of. We could just empty it, and that could be up for up and running quite quickly. But the reason I want to show this is you can make money on rentals, but you need to be aware that the best way to do it is how we started. We did one apartment. Um, because we rented an apartment nearby, uh, renovated one of ours, rented it out because our rent in where we were was cheaper than our own rentals. Um, but then we converted the next one underneath that and then we moved into that one and kept one out for rent. And with the money that comes in every month, that sort of keeps everything ticking over. And then as we had spare money, we sort of did other projects, uh, for example, upgraded the water tanks and bits and pieces. Now we've got the first apartment in the next block already rented out. My office that sits in the other block is now going to be turned into an apartment. And I've got two options at the moment. If you're quick enough, um, we're renting it out at 3,500 a month, completely empty. Um, we will probably put the kitchenette in, but beyond that, there's nothing else. Um, the bathroom's already there, obviously. I mean, the bathrooms are a lot better than you'll find in most places. Um, but the the water it's got a water tank already because they're all fed from my main water tank. Uh, you've got the city water as well that's attached to it. You've got um, 
Wi-Fi available from the other house. So even if you can't get it to the door, you can always go over and use the Wi-Fi if you needed to. But there is a cable there, but I can't guarantee it's working because I'm not physically there at the minute. Um, there's cable TV with a guy next door. Uh, we put cable TV in for him. We've got cable TV in the other apartment as well. We might put it in this one, depending on what setup we can get for the cost of a rental uh, for that contract, because it's normally cost me about six, 7,000 a year for just for cable TV. I don't watch it. I originally got it for my father-in-law to watch boxing matches and basketball, etc. so he didn't go out as much because it sort of look after my mother-in-law a bit more. Um, but the reality is, they can be quite viable. Uh, I just don't recommend it for a lot of expats that are going there for retirement because, like this, we started our construction 2008, somewhere around that, 2008, 2009, and we've still got some construction to do. But the good thing is, when you've got people in them, you can roll the money, you can upgrade things, you can change the pipe work, you can do bits and pieces. In this case, we've got the first one rented out. The money that's coming in from that will pay for the, the, the bits on the next one. Um, what about Mac losing his, losing his office? I've actually got another office. On the other building, there is a big office there as well. I'm just going to move my stuff over there. The only play, thing I'm worried about is my motorbike because that sits in my office. Um, I know somebody's already made this stupid comment of, well, why is he leaving it in his office? Because we have an open compound. Although we have um, gated a gate on the front of this building, you've got to bear in mind there's no parking in there. We have a parking space, but there is nowhere to keep the motorbike out of the damp, etc. So it doesn't go in there. On the other building is a carport, which is sat between two houses, and it's easy to access. That's why it sits in my office. It keeps everyone away from it. But I just wanted to show you what we do uh, with property rentals. So you can have a think, is it something you want to do? Is it easy to get people to rent? It, I'll be honest with you, Minglanilia doesn't have that many people rent with properties to rent. Um, you find that even looking for a small, say a empty place, one bedroom starts at about three, five, for anything half decent. Um, Two bedrooms about seven thousand upwards. Um, three bedroom comp. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, subdivisions about twenty thousand a month. So the reality is there isn't many around. There's no hotels in our area um, unless you go up to two board flowing waters. Um, but a lot of people don't want to pay one thousand six hundred a day rent. So well, hotel rates, isn't it? So that's why, yes, we do get a lot of people through our doors. And I said, if you're, if you're quick and just look for an empty place, we've actually got one that's going to be 3500 But if you want to rent it, you're going to have to rent it for at least six months to a year. Um, because, quite simply, I just want somebody in there looking after it. They get a decent place to live in, and I don't have to worry about it. And at the same time, it puts that bit of building into usage, um, so I can move that money upstairs because I'm about to put some leveling compound on the concrete to smooth it all out upstairs to start building the three bedroom apartment that's going to be there which is mine in April's. Alright, thanks for watching.